What I want to do is walk you through one. We have a vehicle. It's a 91 Lexus LS400. And we're going to uh, show and illustrate how to determine if it's a pull up or pull down type circuit, how to manipulate the signal and make the igniter uh, receive the signal from the computer and fire the coil. This is going to aid in no spark diagnosis in particular uh, when you're not sure if the coil is bad, the igniter is bad, the computer is bad, wiring is bad, or maybe you have an input problem. This is going to make that so much faster. So, and we want to focus on our IGT signal. How do we know it was the IGT signal? Uh, we got a little bit of help with that. So let's come down and take a look at that real quick. And on this, uh, we pulled this out of Mitchell. It was a description of circuit design. We need a little bit of help. And I, I highlighted in yellow, it says uh, primary circuit is turned off when the ECU, that's electronic control unit, that's an old terminology for PCM, today's cars, when the ECU sends a signal to the igniter on the IGT wire. So here's what we got. I wrote this down. It's an electronic type switch input. I'll call this module to module communication. And our, EG, our IGT signal is the ECU to igniter control signal. The ECU generates the signal based on the cam crank sensor input, sends a square wave to the IGT, or sorry, to the igniter on the IGT circuit. What we don't know right now, because we want to do a bypass test, is it a pull up or pull down circuit, and can we identify circuit design? All right, so looking at the wiring diagram, looking at our IGT wire, we're going to see if this diagram is able to tell us circuit design. Is it pull up? Is it pull down? So map the IGT circuit. This is what you would do if you're working on the car. And right there it says IGT1. So basically what we have is an ECU and we have an igniter and that's it. So the answer is no, you cannot identify circuit design on a wiring diagram. It is not possible on an electronic design. So you have to do it another way. What we're going to do while we're here is map out the other one because we're going to do them both on the car. We'll map out the other IGT on the other igniter. And it's pin 2 and it's also going to go to the computer. And there's my IGT2 signal. So what we're going to try to determine circuit design on the car using a voltmeter, what we want to know, are the igniters sending voltage to the ECU and the ECU is pulling it to ground, making the square wave, or is the ECU generating a square wave, sending it to the igniter in a pull up fashion. So what we're going to do when we come down to the igniter, down here, we'll take a measurement depending on if our voltage is high, let's say it's 12 volts, we'll take a test light to ground and we'll touch it on the wire and we'll pull the circuit down and it's going to spark, it'll react. If the voltage is low on that wire, say zero volts, we'll take our test light to power and touch it on and off and we'll make it react. So if it's zero volts, I would call that a pull up design circuit. If it's 12 volts, I would call that a pull down design circuit. We need to know this to be able to do this kind of test. All right, we're going to go to the car now. Okay, we're under the hood. I have the two IGT wires T pin, one for each igniter. This is a definitely a goofy system. It has two different distributors, two different coils, and uh, we have two different igniters that control those two different coils. And so we're going to do the uh, igniter bypass test or ECU bypass test and see if these igniters function. <clears throat> and what we need to do first is we need to determine if we need to give this T-pin, the signals, a, a power or a ground. Is it pull up or pull down? Measure the voltage with a voltmeter. Key is on. T-pin on that connector. I got zero volts on that wire. 
and I have zero volts on that wire. And so what I know is these two igniters need to have a high low signal, on off signal, to be able to turn the transistor on and off to fire the coils. And I know now that I need to give these two guys high voltage, not low voltage. I'm not going to ground them, I'm going to give them power. I'm going to do it through my test light. This is going to reduce the current flow in the circuit. Any uh, overload of current or if I would touch the wrong wire, my test light would just light. I'm not going to hurt anything. Test lights connected to battery positive. When I touch my test light to ground, it should light. That's an important part of the step. Come down here. This uh, right igniter is going to fire the coil on that side and this left igniter is going to fire the coil on this side. I already have the coil wire unplugged from the distributor and it's laying on the valve cover over here near it. Same thing on this side, a little bit longer air gap here. Watch when I touch this T-pin for this side with my test light connected to battery positive simulating the ECU's on off square wave. Touch that wire, on off, I should get a spark every time. Same thing with the other igniter on this side, touch this on and off, and you see I'm getting a spark every time I do it. Something to note, my test light, if you watch it, is not lighting when I touch these pins, right? This is just a control signal, it's a low voltage circuit, it doesn't carry any current flow, I'm just using my test light to manipulate the circuit and pull it up it's a pull-up design circuit to make these igniters fire. What's nice about this test and what we just did, if the car comes in and it's a no-spark situation, no guesswork involved, no reason to try a coil, no reason to try an igniter, igniter's fine, coil's fine, the wiring's fine for the igniter and coils, the direction would be cam, crank, input, the direction would be going toward the inputs, which would be the cam and crank sensor, or going toward the ECU as a problem if this car came in as a no spark. That's how you do a bypass using section two in my book, pull up, pull down circuitry.